Welcome back to our channel. So in the previous session we have seen a few C language interview questions and in this session let us see some more interview questions. The first one. Difference between plus plus A and A plus plus. It's a common question asked in the interviews. So here, the plus plus A is called as pre-increment, right? So pre-increment because if A is a variable, we are writing the, this plus plus as a prefix. So we call it as a pre-increment. Now the working of this one is, as the name itself indicates, pre-increment. In our C language, the increment means a unit interval. For example, A is equal to 1. If you increment A value, then automatically A will be 2. That means the difference between these increments is 1. So that's why we call it as a unit interval. So here, the pre-increment, the name itself indicates, first we have to perform the increment operation. increment value of a and second use the incremented value in expression right so that means first we have to increment the a then we have to use this incremented value in expression. Right. Now let us take an example. So if A is equal to 2, B is equal to 3, then C is equal to B, uh, sorry, plus plus A plus B. So in this expression, we got this pre-increment. So the implementation of this pre-increment is, first we have to increment the value of a and then use this incremented value in expression. So C is equal to initially A is equal to 2. Now pre increment. First we have to increment the value of 2. So it will be now 3 and use this incremented value in the expression. So 3 must be used in expression. 3 plus 3 it is equal to 6. So this is the working of pre increment. Now the same expression if you take it a plus plus we call it as post increment right so here the working of post increment means so whenever we use this post increment in the expression then first of all use the old value of a in expression and then increment the value of a so first we have to use this uh, the old value that means the value before increment should be used in the expression and then after executing the expression then we have to increment the value of a so that's why we call it as a post increment. That means after using the value, we have to increment. For example, let us take the same example. C is equal to B plus A plus plus. B plus A plus plus. Here we are using post increment. Now, according to our definition, the B value is 3 plus as it is a post increment, First, we have to use the old value of a in expression. So, old value and before that means before using the value, uh, before incrementing the value of a, the value is two. So, this two must be used here. So, the expression will be five. And if you try to print a, now a will be three. So, after using the old value in the expression, it will be incremented to one. So, this is the major difference between the pre-increment and post post increment. 
the same explanation will be applied in pre decrement and post decrement here we will increase the value in the decrement we will decrease the value so this is the common question you can expect in each and every interview the difference between a pre increment and a post increment hope you understood this question right next see the next one the next common question is difference between is equal to and double is equal to so a little bit confusion among these two single is equal to and double is equal to a simple thing is equal to single is equal to is an assignment operator assignment operator so that means so when we will use this single is equal to so whenever we are assigning some value to the variable then we will use this is equal to for example a is equal to 2 that means 2 is assigned to the variable a c is equal to a plus b the result of an expression a plus b is assigned to the variable c so this is called assignment operator if you want to assign a value to the variable next double is equal to double is equal to means comparison operator that means a relational operator it's a relational operator so this double is equal to is used to compare two variables the values of two variables for example if a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3 so if we want to compare whether these two are equal a is equal to b then we will use this double is equal to mainly this will be used in conditions so as we know that conditions are a boolean type it will result either true or false so if it is a true the true condition the true block will be executed and the if it, the condition is false then the false block will be executed but at a time only one block will be executed either true or false so these relational operators will be used in conditions so mainly this is for comparison comparison comparing two value two values two variables right so this is a, a simple thing and this is also a uh, frequently asked question and then see the most common thing uh, is the I mean the most common question uh, is the difference between the bitwise operators and logical operators because here we call it as end or and here also we are calling as end or so this is the end this is or here also this we call it as an end this is also or but we call it as a bitwise end bitwise or this is a logical end logical or so what is the difference between these two? Where we will use these bitwise operators and the logical operators? So mainly these bitwise operators, the name itself indicates, these operators are, can be performed in between the bits. These can be implemented in between bits. So for this, we have to convert into binary so because the binary is nothing but zeros and ones which we call it they call them as bits right so in order to perform this bitwise, bitwise operations first we have to convert it into binary and then in between the binary items we have to perform these operators coming to this one so these logical operators 
will be used in compound conditions. Compound conditions means so whenever whenever a user or a programmer wants to check more than one condition in a single line then we will use this logical and and logical or for example so a b and c we have to compare all these three so if a greater than b and a greater than c i want to compare these two conditions a greater than b and a greater than c so this is one condition this is another condition right so if you want to compare more than one condition at a time we will use this logical and so we will use this logical operators so we can use this logical and or logical or whatever it may be right so these are the conditional statements these logical operators can be used in conditional statements so only uh, if any two variables having only a single relational operator we call it as a simple condition and whatever the condition or an expression which consists of these logical operators we call them as a compound conditions that means compound conditions are nothing but more than one simple condition comparing more than one simple conditions right so this is the major difference and where we will use these bitwise operators and logical operators next yes the next one is also very very important that is the differences between data types and modifiers so here also there will be little bit confusion for the students so compare with, uh, what what we call it as a data types and what we call it as a modifiers right so we know that fundamental data types in our c language in float character double in float character and double now what are the modifiers so here these modifiers are mainly used to increase or reduce the size or storage size or storage we can call it anything or the range of existing data type existing data type right so see so we know every data type every fundamental data type has a boundary that means a range so this range depends upon the storage of that particular data type so this modifiers will increase or reduce the size or storage or the range of existing data types that means if you want to store a 40000 the value of 40000 in integer variable this cannot be done because this 40000 exceeds the range of integer data type right so this 40000 will exceeds the range of integer data type so we can't store the same value in integer variable for this type of problems we have to use these modifiers so there are two types of modifiers one is size modifiers so size modifiers are nothing but short long so short means it will reduce the range long means it will increase the range next sign modifiers so here sign means positive sign and a negative sign see here signed and unsigned so signed will consists of 
both positive and negative values. Here unsigned will consist of only positive values. It will, it will not accept any negative values in this unsigned. So these are the modifiers available in our C language. So which reduce or increase the storage or range of existing data. So if you want to store this 40,000 in integer variable, we have to declare the variable as long int a is equal to 40,000. So this will be accepted because we are using the modifier long, size modifier long, which increases the range of this variable. That means which increases the storage capacity of this variable. And the storage capacity of a variable depends upon the type of a compiler. If it is a 16 bit compiler, integer will store 2 bytes. If it is a 32 bit compiler, the integer will store 4 bits. So it will be modified into 4 bytes, it will be modified into 8 bytes. So depends upon the compiler, this storage will be shifting, right? So this storage will be varying. So for 16 bit and a 32 bit compilers. So whatever it may be, it will increase or reduce the storage or range of existing data types. So here sign, sign means by default, if you use the int a, this will be treated as a signed, signed int. So if you mention here unsigned, unsigned int a is equal to minus 5. So this is a wrong because unsigned means it will accept only positive, it doesn't accept the negative value, right? So this is the one more important question you can expect in the interview. So difference between the data types and the modifiers. And in the next video, I will elaborate these differences between the signed and unsigned with an example. So in this session, uh, hope you understood everything. So if you are having any doubts regarding this C language, Feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that definitely I will try to clarify all your doubts. And if you really understood my videos, like my videos, share my sessions with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much.